Let's just start with this right off the bat, man. Look, the Atlanta Falcons, they fell short to the Minnesota Vikings. They got spanked 42 to 21. This was a crazy, crazy game. It didn't look bad to start off. Honestly, the Falcons, they started off this game with an actual chance to make something happen. Seemed pretty close, but now since they lost against the Vikings, they're on a four-game losing streak. They're now second in the NFC South. Kirk Cousins, oh man, he's getting booed. He's getting clowned on social media. People are asking for him to go to the bench. And for the Vikings, this means they actually clinched a playoff spot. So shout out to the Vikings. Took care of business. Kirk couldn't beat his home team, but he still wanted to throw the ball to them. It seemed like that was the case the entire game. But uh, for Kirk Cousins, man, yeah, let's let's get to it because he's the he's the, the topic of discussion here. Everybody wants to dog Kirk Cousins out. They want to talk about Kirk Cousins and, and they, in a bad way saying he needs to go to the bench. And I agree. I think Kirk Cousins is done here. It's no reason the Atlanta Falcons need to continue trying to make something work with him because at this point, Kirk Cousins has diminished the all the momentum the Atlanta Falcons had in this season. He's ruined it. They were first in the NFC South, and now they are second. They were on win streaks, but now they're on a four-game losing streak. Kirk Cousins himself, the man has not thrown a touchdown pass in four games, 14 quarters. But instead, not only did he not throw a touchdown pass, he's thrown eight interceptions. Eight interceptions. Eight of them. Not three, not two, not one, not four. Eight interceptions. This man has been horrific. Awful, man. Four games and the guy hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. And and I know the easy way out and the fun thing for everybody to do right now is blame Kirk Cousins. They're going to be like, oh, well, Kirk Cousins, you know, he's been bad. Start Michael Penix. He's not doing it. But nobody's really saying why Atlanta Falcons fans want to bench Kirk Cousins. Because the random people who hear it and they're like, oh, oh, why would you bench Kirk Cousins? He's still a decent quarterback. He's second in passing yards in the NFL right now. Why would you bench him? I get it. It sounds silly right off the bat. I understand that. But the thing that a lot of people are missing, they're not watching these games. They're not watching Kirk Cousins noodle arm it downfield. They're not watching him overthrow or throw inaccurately to targets who are wide open or even just missing blatant wide open targets. People who aren't going for Kirk Cousins to go to the bench and they're saying he needs to continue to play, you're not really seeing what he's doing right now. Because even when he isn't throwing all these crazy inaccurate interceptions, he's still throwing them on crucial moments of the game, which turns the momentum sideways. You kill everything when you throw an interception on a drive that you worked so hard to maintain and march downfield. If B. John Robinson is carrying the offense running up and down the field, getting them all the way to the opponent's side of the 50, and you throw an interception, what do you think that does for your defense? It's demoralizing when you continue to throw them back to back to back to back. It's sad. So I I get it. Yeah, Kirk Cousins, he's an experienced guy. Experienced veteran quarterback, as you may say. They paid him $180 million, which is the real reason why I think they don't want to, you know, send Kirk Cousins to the bench because they're like, look, I'd be damned if my investment of $180 million goes on the sideline. I, I get that part. That is valid. But damn it, he's not playing good at all. He's a very a, a point A to B quarterback, meaning like there's nothing that he's doing that's deceiving the, the defense. And part of this is also on Zach Robinson. You can blame him for this too, for Kirk Cousins' terrible performances because his play call hasn't been the best. So maybe you got Kirk Cousins out there trying to audible in a situation that's not really necessary. or And you also got uh, 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 Zach Robinson who's calling bad plays on these fourth and shorts and these, these other short yardage situations. He's calling bad plays all around. And there's situations where, I, I, I mean, I've seen Kirk Cousins throw dots and whatever, but it's like I, I'm still voting for Michael Penix to start right now. And the main, pen, the main reason I say I need Michael Penix to, to get on the field and make something happen and, and send Kirk Cousins to the bench is because when I'm looking at the pros and cons, there's a lot more pros in favor of Michael Penix than what I see for Kirk Cousins. And I say this just like from a logical standpoint, not necessarily because Kirk is bad. And and I want to reset the tone because with Penix, 
the, the first thing I'm looking at right now for a big reason why the Falcons should start Penix and send Kirk Cousins to the bench is because, truthfully speaking, I, I think we all can agree that it can't get any worse than what we're seeing from Kirk Cousins right now. Penix, it's no way Penix goes on the field and throw four interceptions. I highly doubt that's the case. And if he does, I mean, it's still not worse than what Kirk Cousins is doing. So that's the crazy part about, like, you know, Penix should be starting. This is going to help him gain experience. This is, I mean, a, another thing where I think this could trick opponents starting Michael Penix is because he doesn't have any film on him. You know, NFL is just heavily reliant on film and tendencies and what guys are, are comfortable with, uncomfortable with. With Michael Penix Jr., there's nothing that no one knows where it's like, oh, he's very uncomfortable if we format the defense this way or if we send pressure at him this way. He's very uncomfortable with that. We're yet to know what his tendencies are. So at this point, there's a lot of, of plus or a lot of, I, I won't say plus, but there's a lot of reason why he may throw with starting with this Atlanta Falcons offense. You look at a lot of rookie quarterbacks, they have good seasons their first year because there's no film on them. And then they go into the sophomore slump and they really have to figure out how they're going to go against the adversity. But as far as Penix, another pro I see, he's got a bigger arm. So, I mean, based on what I've seen, he's got a bigger arm than Kirk Cousins because Kirk has been noodle arming it downfield. I don't see anything there. And you could possibly make the argument that Penix Jr. is even more accurate than Kirk Cousins because based on what we've seen in the last few games at Kirk Cousins, it ain't been good. The only con I can think of for Michael Penix Jr. and why he shouldn't be starting over Kirk Cousins just goes back to the experience thing. Outside of experience, there's, for me, anything I've seen from the eye test of Kirk Cousins, there's no legitimate reason he should be starting over, over Michael Penix. Outside of the fact that the Falcons paid Kirk Cousins $180 million for four years when he's already coming off an injury and he's old. Like, other than that, there's no other reason why I think he should be starting over Michael Penix Jr. right now. It's just not good, man. It, it looks rough. And, you know, above all, I, I'm happy about certain aspects from the Falcons. The defense, the, the pass rush finally got there. They held their own as long as they could. But it's hard for, for teams to stay motivated when your team is giving the others multiple possessions and you're fumbling and, and you know, your offense can't get back out there. Your defense is on the field the whole game. Of course, teams are going to continue to score and pile up the points. But one of the things I'm proud of is, like, the pass rush for the Falcons has been better than what we've seen all season. I mean, in the last two weeks, they've almost had more sacks than they had the first 11 weeks combined, which is crazy. So I'm happy about that aspect, but it's just like they can't get things going at the same time because the pass rush is finally fixed. Now the secondary is broken. You got guys just losing the ball completely in midair when you guard in Justin Jefferson and Addison. Like these guys wasn't even, it ain't like they killed him on the route. I promise you. Watching this, it wasn't like, uh, um, D. Alfred got killed on a route. He just literally got lost in the looking for the ball and looking for his defender. This happened multiple times. Guys waved their hand, just shouting for the ball, and the defender still couldn't find him. Justin Simmons back there, he's guilty. Jesse Bates, he's guilty as well. So I, I think, man, it's it's bad. We look like a bad six and seventeen. It looked like I don't even know how the hell the Falcons won six games, right? 